Hey Jonathan, this is a video of our yard just for you. Just thought maybe the video would be a little better than all these still pictures we've been doing. Here's Susan, she may say something, I don't know. And we had a wonderful time last night. But I did cut over here in the shade garden, so, uh, you know, we've, we haven't planted much yet, but we got some neat larope coming back up, and we got the hostas are coming back. And here's your plant, your uh, Jonathan plant. And actually, this is kind of funny. That little thing right there at the bottom is what it came in when you were born in the hospital. So this is how it is now. Uh, what is this thing called, Susan? I forgot. That's a poet. Poet's laurel. That thing is starting to grow good. We've got a lot of things growing well today. Uh, these, I'm not sure if these, look at what's right there, Susan. Um, what are these things called? Hellebores. Hellebores. And the bad thing about them is all of their uh, blooms kind of point at the ground. And they're a winter blooming thing, so we like that. And then we just saw this. This is crazy. This never comes back. It's what is a it? wild flower that's rare, and I can't remember the name of it at the moment. It's, a, it's some kind of a wild flower. And I think you have these things here. Um, well, they he does, Solomon Seal. Solomon Seal. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the inchworms pooping. Yeah, well, you can hear inchworms. And then this is, uh, again, we've got a few more. We've got some hostas coming on up, and uh, that's the, what is that plant called, Sue? Oh, so that's we, a chiflera. The chiflera from... Uh, that's Jack's. From, that's Jack's plant from his funeral. funeral. In 1993. In 1993. So anyhow... We're gonna scoot on around here. This is our little, uh, let's see, let me get a better angle, Japanese. Japanese maple, because we also have this other Japanese maple back there that, uh, that's about maybe 15 feet tall. This here is about five feet tall and it's not growing any bigger. And I think it's on a, a grafted root system i think you can see the bump there where it's grafted it's a different root stock than the uh than the whole rest of the plant back here where the azaleas were we have uh well i cut i just took the lawnmower and went in there and really just chopped out a whole bunch of stuff and those are mammals iris the first time they've ever bloomed this is mammals iris back here and it's the first time they've ever bloomed because of our tree loss. I still have a few azaleas. I may keep the, these white ones and this bright pink. They're really, really tall, and I just cut everything out from around them, so I don't know if they'll bush out or if I need to just cut them back or what. But yeah, these iris, they look good. And these are peonies, or peonies, however you pronounce them. From the farm. From the farm. But the iris are also mammoths, so that's kind of neat. Every single one is blooming. They've yep. never done yep. that. So, show him his maples he can dig up. Yeah, I got some maples here if you want them. Japanese. Japanese maples. We got the green kind, and we got the uh, red. red. And red. And red. But they're here. Susan yanked them out of the garden at Lewis, at Lewis Ginner. And there's my hickory that makes my meat taste really good. <laughs> and look how good the ground cover is doing in here. This is just amazing. Uh, but all of our uh, periwinkle is just going wild this year, which is great. It's filling in and covering up stuff. A little bit of sedum left. A little bit of sedum left. And this stuff here is... Uh, Jerusalem cherries, and it looks like crap right now, but it will get better. Well, I'm gonna dig them out. Yeah. Tell them we're taking out all these, maybe. I made my little garden a little bit bigger. Went to uh, Lowe's and bought me some new boards, and and anyhow, I'm growing nine peppers. So we'll see, and they're all different. So I'll be making some kind of sauce out of that in the future. This is kind of funny. I grew. Uh, cabbage last winter 
and it never did make a head but guess what we've been pulling the leaves off and making some really great coleslaw what you want to talk just, about just show him yeah how it sticks out in the azalea oh the azalea okay, this good. azalea this is what happens when you plant them too close to the to the house they're uh, they were real little when i planted them and they're real old, so I think we're going to trim those up uh, after they finish blooming. But boy, they really look good. That's the Hershey Red. Uh, these are my favorite azaleas, and they have not popped open yet. They're underneath the uh, wind chime. We'll send the still when they. We'll open. send the still when they pop open, but they're almost open now. And then uh, the deck is. Uh, well, there's nothing really to be said about the deck. And these purple ones on the end of the deck, they, they, they are just now popping open. So we've had a little bit of different stuff. That's sort of the way our azaleas do. They don't all fire up at the same time. Show him all the lilies of the valley. Have to get close yeah, to we that. got a lot of lily of the valley down here, too. And that stuff has been spreading the little white. really good, too. I don't know if you can see the... The little white stems. The little white stems and stuff. They smell really good. They smell really good too. And then there's a nice hosta back there by the power meter. And believe it or not, down in here somewhere, you really can't see it, it's some black liriope. I'll send him. And I always have to wonder, did that come from Jessica? No, it came from Louis Ginter. Yeah, but I wonder if, oh, oh, yeah. if it really came yeah. from Jessica now. That's the, Autumn. George. That's uh, Autumn Clematis. We've got an Autumn Clematis here on the side of the thing, uh, the tool shed. And we're coming on around, we're coming on around by the heat pumps. And we got the really old style uh, bleeding hearts right here. She got those from her janitor at, uh, at her school. <coughs> they have the heirloom kind. They have constant sun shining on them. Yeah. Oh, what about that? Constant sun on the liriope, bleeding hearts, and cherry bundle. Well, it's still, we don't ever have it so much sun, but this is one of the sunnier areas. And then this is the new style bleeding hearts, and they're really pretty too. But they don't last very long. They don't last as long as the other ones. And again, you can see our <coughs> periwinkle is just filling in really nice all around the front of the house. The yard looks amazing too. Check this out. I mean, this guy has really gotten pretty much all the weeds out of here. Our, our yard looks better than it's probably ever looked. And there's a white um, iris. Yeah. I think from Memo. And I chainsawed over here and thinned that all out. I got a little more work to do in there, but boy, that was that was a lot of work. Uh, I want to run up to the front here and get the uh, lady slipper, Susan. There's another iris here. And this is kind of like some vinca that went wild over here by the well. It really looks cool, too. I think it's from a dish garden. Susan said it came initially from a dish garden. And it's really, uh, really taken over. And it really looks good on the edge of the yard, too. So that's pretty neat. All right, I'm running out here. Again, our periwinkle. And this periwinkle I got out of the woods. This is a periwinkle I got dug out of the woods before the house was built over next door. And it's white. There's some blue mixed in it now. Susan mixed some in. But that's really, that really looks good when we come in the driveway. <clears throat> of course, we still got disasters from uh, Hurricane Irene and Sandy to clean up. But I was worried that actually the disaster had gotten their uh, lady slippers. These are real delicate native plants. Uh, here they are. I don't know if you can see that too hot or not. But we only have about five plants. There's two there, three, there's one over here. But anyhow, you can see all these stumps and stuff fell all over. 
and they work in one of those, I think it's called symbiotic relationships. There's some kind of fungus underground that they have to have. So if they don't have that, then they won't live. So you can't dig them up and move them is what I'm saying. And I've walked all through our three acres, and this is the only spot I know of. I have not seen them anywhere else. Are there any more blooms? The, there's a bloom right here that Kelly found yesterday that I didn't see. Right oh. there. Wow. Uh, trapped underneath that log. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, we still got <laughs> stumps and stuff. It's cool today, and I'm getting ready to chainsaw some out here. This is near the front of the house. Well, this has gone a lot longer than I thought it would be. It's uh, almost 11 minutes now, so I don't know what else to say. Do you, Susan? No, that's about it, I think. All right, well, I guess we'll sign off. I'm going to stick this up on YouTube, so it'll take a while, but it's the only way I know to actually get it to you. Uh, we do have a lot of inchworms kind of driving us nuts. But they're hung here, but I'll just kind of do a slow thing here. The house. And when you come home, I guess it'll still look pretty good, but we really just have some good looking yard here lately. That's all I can say. All right, talk to you later. We'll let you know when this is up there.